Hey everybody, it's Bob Crossan, Senior Managing Editor for Water and Waste Digest. Today I have with me Reed Staten. He is Product Development Manager for Veolia. And I have Luke Wood. He is a Biological Process Manager for Veolia. And we're going to be talking all about total phosphorus. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate you both being here today and uh, talking about the subject. Thanks. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. So let's start first. So let's set some ground rules, get an understanding of like the foundation that we're building on here about total phosphorus. What even is total phosphorus? <laughs> a great question and a great way to kick us off, Bob. Um, you know, phosphorus is you know it's a critical nutrient. You know, that's fundamental for all plants and animals. You know, it's essential in the development of a lot of things, you know, DNA for one, you know, it helps with metabolism, you know, it also helps develop bones and teeth. So it can be found naturally in rocks and soil, um, but it also can be found in many man-made products as well. Mm -hmm. it, however, there are lots of forms of phosphorus, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but simplistically speaking, you know, it really can be broken down into two uh, kind of simple forms, you know, the particulate and dissolved fraction of that. Uh, the dissolved fractions, you know, can be organic and orga inorganic. And, and when we talk about, you know, the wastewater treatment uh, industry, you know, orthophosphate is often, you know, one of the key fractions that is well known within that industry. And it's also often referred to as the reactive version of the reactive phosphorus. You know, orthophosphate is, is the, one of the more stable forms of phosphorus. Um, and it's also the form that's, you know, directly used by plant uh, plant cells as well. There are many other, you know, complex forms of phosphorus, uh, including the non-reactive versions um, that are very difficult to remove. And the makeup of total phosphorus and all these various uh, speciations, so to speak, you know, really influence how and to what extent the phosphorus can be removed. Um, and so total phosphorus, you know, really in its simplest definition is really just the measurement of all of those various forms of phosphorus. Yeah. Okay, so much more complex than just saying, "Oh, it's phosphorus." <laughs> it exactly. can be so many things. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so with it, with it having so many different, uh, like different ways that you can, different types of phosphorus, I guess, is the way to, to a way to phrase it. Um, how do you even measure it then? Like, how do you measure to, uh, phosphorus then? Well, that also is a good question. So, typically, when you're measuring phosphorus in, in wastewater. You have to convert all of all of those different forms to orthophosphate. Um, okay. And, and you do that simply if you think of the standard COD test, you, you can do that by do, doing a you know an acid digestion to convert that to ortho, all that to orthophosphate. At that point, then you you measure it. That the, the the most common method is a method that uses um, ascorbic vitamin C, ascorbic acid, and and another form, ammonium molybdate or something. It's EPA method 365, I believe. The short of all that is, is the really, I think the key takeaway from that, you know, about talking about phosphorus measurement is with the advent of all the, you know, the new methods now from, from different companies with the bench top spectrophotometers and all the test kits, you can actually measure, measure phosphorus quite accurately right at the wastewater plant. You don't necessarily have to send it off to a lab. Um, if you want accurate measurements. And so any plant that's doing biological nutrient removal really should have those, those, those technologies in their laboratories, um, you know, to, to, to help monitor what's going on in their plant. Yeah. So t talking about kind of the levels and stuff, what, what could a high level of phosphorus mean when you find that in water? And what would even be a high level of phosphorus? Is that something that can even be, is there like a threshold there? Good question, and, and that varies. And you know, phosphorus. You know, one of the key challenges, especially in the wastewater treatment industry, is you know, phosphorus is a is a nutrient that is necessary for life. What we talked about, right? It's it's used by plants and animals and other aquatic life. And you know, in most waterways, because it's consumed and used in in, in life, it, it's relatively low in clean water. However, like we talked about, there, there are many sources of phosphorus, both naturally, but also through what we've developed over time as humans. Um, you know, many products that we use today, detergents, you know, and other common chemicals that we use every day, unfortunately, contain a, a very high level of phosphorus. And, and these can enter 
you know, through waterways and consumption of those chemicals, or it can enter a wastewater treatment plant, you know, typically through domestic or industrial waste streams. Um, phosphorus can also be found in other areas, such as it's a key component of fertilizers, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, aspects of farming, um, we talked about the the use and, and need of phosphorus for metabolism. It's found in animal waste as well. And, and so uh, oftentimes with large storm events or rain events, you know, the runoff created, you know, can pick up phosphorus. And that's another way for phosphorus to enter into uh, receiving streams or, you know, bodies of water. So uh, all of this, unfortunately, can lead to, you know, elevated levels of phosphorus in water. Um, that's a, a big driver for a lot of plants across the United States. And phosphorus is, is a growth limiting nutrient. And so a, a very minor amount of increase in a water body can lead to an excessive or an overabundance um, in terms of amounts and growth of algae and mm. plants. Um, and as that happens, you know, the process is, is as you grow a plant, right, as it dies over time, you know, it's going to decompose. And as it does this decomposition, it will consume oxygen. And this is really where it becomes critical because it, as it consumes oxygen in a water body, uh, for instance, it can lead to an environment that is very hazardous for fish and other aquatic life, um, often referred to as a dead zone or a hypoxic zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, you know, excessive algae is, you know, it presents other problems, right? You know, health concerns for public consumption of uh, drinking water and also, you know, the level of treatment to, you know, needed to treat the drinking water sources as well can play a huge role in the amount of phosphorus in water sources. So, you know, it's, it's a big topic. You know, many uh, facilities, many wastewater treatment plants, many states and agencies are looking at ways to you know, reduce the amount of phosphorus entering the bodies of water and therefore, you know, really looking at ways, especially around a wastewater treatment plant, you know, looking at ways to reduce that discharge permit to minimize the overall impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you're talking about reducing this, obviously removal is a portion of this uh, entire thing. You mentioned even in one of your previous uh one of the previous answers about how certain types uh, of phosphorus can be kind of difficult to remove. Um, what what are how can phosphorus be removed? Like what technologies are are available in that regard? Well, generally in 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 in, in most wastewater treatment applications, we 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 remove that we we remove that phosphorus. We we really want to get it all converted to ortho reactive phosphorus or orthophosphate. Mm -hmm. If, if you don't do that, then you have to use more specialized technologies like, you know, like membranes or, or, or some other thing. But if you can convert it to ortho, if you can get that phosphorus converted to orthophosphate, then we can remove it either chemically or, or biologically. Um, um, and, and both those technologies have their place in, 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 in wastewater treatment. Um, I'll talk a little bit first about biological phosphorus removal, and then I'll let, let, we follow up with, with chemical. Um, biological phosphorus removal, the, the idea, all forms of wastewater treatment perform biological phosphorus removal to some degree because you're basically, you're growing organisms. What we're really interested in, in, in when we're doing, when we say biological phosphorus removal in a wastewater plant is something called enhanced biological phosphorus removal where we manipulate conditions in the wastewater treatment in the flow, in the flow path to so select for a certain type of organisms called PAOs or phosphorus accumulating organisms. These particular organisms can store, internally store probably three to, to six times more phosphorus than a standard, most organisms you, you see in the wastewater plant. So if you can cultivate those or grow those selectively, you can, you, you can drive your phosphorus in the water to very low levels. We, there are, there are, there are or biological plants that, that drive phosphorus well below 0.5 mill, you know, down in the 0.2 to 0.3 milligram per liter range easily with just biological phosphorus removal alone. Um, and, and I, you know, without going into biological phosphorus removal in and of itself is, is, is fairly complex. I'll just say, what I'll just sum it up to say what you want to, you want to create these conditions of alternating conditions of anaerobic conditions and oxic conditions. And if you do that, do that in the right order, and you give the give these bacteria some other things like we, something we call DFAs or volatile fatty acids, the right kind of food, then you can selectively cultivate those bacteria 
and 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 dry the phosphorus um, to pretty low levels. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so when you do that in your plant and all the stars are aligned, like I said, you can get very low levels. But it is a biological process, and biological processes don't always work the way you expect. And so you oftentimes have to 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 be very diligent about how you manage your process to, to get it to work consistently. Yeah. So Reed, you wanted to touch on the um on the chemical side as well. Yeah. It, you know, as Luke alluded to, you know, the, the level of phosphorus removal needed really, you know, drives, you know, to some degree, uh, you know, the, the technologies needed. And so biological is, is typically one of the first things that's looked at. And then as you start to, you know, screw down the, you know, the screw a little bit more and, and really start to stress what we call low level phosphorus. And we're talking 0.1 milligram per liter or even less. You really start to look at either a combination of biological and chemical treatment or what we would call enhanced tertiary treatment. Um, and as, as Luca mentions, you know, it's usually through the combination of uh, chemical addition, uh, which helps to drive uh, the reactive phosphorus, the ortho, the dissolved fraction we talked about earlier, into a per, uh, particulate form that can be removed effectively. Um, and of course, the tighter the limit, um, you know, when we, especially when we're talking about 0.1 milligram per liter TP total phosphorus or less, you know, there's really minimal room for error um, on these very enhanced tertiary treatment levels or permits that really need to meet very tight uh, constraints um, with respect to phosphorus. And so the choice of technologies is, is really key um, to ensuring that you, the system provides a very consistent effluent quality and that you know provides the best overall treatment for the facility um, to ensure that it can meet these phosphorus levels. Because you know, you just really right on that ragged edge to ensuring you meet phosphorus limits. So it's, it's uh, key to picking the right technology. Mm-hmm. And then the only, you know, when we talk about enhanced tertiary treatment, you know, we really have two proven technologies. And the first one of those is, uh, it's a cloth media filter uh, manufactured by Hydrotech. It's a 10 micron cloth. Um, and it's really focused on just particle separation across that, you know, woven cloth uh, media filter. And, we're going to combine that, especially in low phosphorus application, you know, less than 0.1 milligram per liter. We're going to combine that with that chemical addition, uh, really to, to help uh, convert that soluble fraction, that ortho uh, phosphate, to a removable solid uh, in combination with that woven cloth media to uh, achieve that 0.1 milligram per liter or less uh, uh, total P. The other technology we have is, is out active flow valve to clarification. Uh, it's a okay. physical chemical process. Uh, that takes the same uh, chemistry associated with converting your orthophosphate uh, to a precipitated or particular form, and we're going to bind that to a ballast. Uh, consider it like an anchor uh, that's you know going to take a uh, flock, a pin flock that usually wants to float around. We're going to attach to that anchor, and it's going to settle out very effectively. So, you know, this process is not only great at removing phosphorus, uh, but it's also uh, provide some op- operational flexibility with respect to handling, you know, the variations in flow and loads that, you know, any wastewater treatment plant typically sees as well. So it's a very flexible system with that respect. So, you know, both technologies are proven, you know, uh, we have over 20 years here in the U.S. of operating experience with piloting and full scale experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and both are, are really cost effective, you know, compact technologies that, you know, provide operations at wastewater treatment plants with a very simple uh, solution for meeting the low phosphorus levels. Yeah. So, like, I, my last question here, and it, it ties in a little bit with one that we talked about earlier and probably has a very similar answer, is uh, what is a good level of phosphorus in water? So we talked about measuring and we talked about a high level. Um, what about a good yeah. level <laughs> in water? And Luke and I talked about this. This is a, this is a debatable topic in itself as well. It's um, yeah. you know it, it varies uh, significantly, um, and it, it, its primary driver there is you know especially in the wastewater treatment plant, right? It's dependent on where you're discharging mm-hmm. and the associated receiving body of water. Um, you know, if you go back through the archives, I think the EPA established you know uh, guidelines um, for how much phosphorus can enter a given definition of you know water body and mm-hmm. and it varied anywhere from 0.1 milligram per liter to 0.024 milligram per liter so uh, wide debate on 
you know, the type of receiving stream and the amount of phosphorus um, that that re receiving stream can handle. Um, and I think most states have adopted similar levels, but again, it, it can absolutely vary from not only from one state to the next and how they portray that receiving stream, but also the type of receiving stream that that wastewater treatment plant is discharging mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add on that, Luke? I imagine that well, you're, you're like, well, it's it, just well, a nebulous topic. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is because it, it can become politically charged to some extent. Um, mm -hmm. to, to his point, what, 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 what it, it varies by, by really by watershed and what the regulatory authority has determined and determined to be a, a limiting quantity, right? Where they can limit eutrophication. Um, and, and, and so, it, as, as you said, it can vary anywhere from less than 0.05 up to, to where there is no phosphorus limit um, in some cases. The reason I say it can be politically charged is, is that, you know, when we talk, when we think and talk about phosphorus, removal, we're talking, we're thinking about wastewater plants, which are point sources. And the real contributors to, to these watersheds mostly are non-point sources, which is a whole nother topic entirely. And, and you know, and so, that's why I say it can become politically charged yeah. for us, you know, the, you know, for, for a company like Veoli and some of others, you know, th these low limits are a good thing. We, we develop technology, we develop and sell technologies to, to address those, mm -hmm. those needs. that that's what we do. Yeah. Well, you're, no you're meeting. Answer. Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> you're, I mean, you're, you guys are, have this technology that is meeting the problem head on so that, should you run into this being lower than you anticipated, you have a solution available. Yeah, sure. So, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for talking about this. I learned so much more about phosphorus than I've ever learned about in my life. So I appreciate your insights and your expertise. Um, for everyone who's watching, definitely check out the video description below. We'll have some resources down there so you can learn a little bit more about phosphorus and Veolius technologies. And um, thank you once more to both you, Reed and Luke. Yeah. Thanks, Bob, for having us. Thank you. Thank you.